Welcome to Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. I am your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking pontoons. Pontoon boats that you should not buy. This is a, a public service announcement, a warning to those that are in the market for a used pontoon boat. So let's look at number one. Number one, it's one of the biggest mistakes that pontoon buyers make in general on new and used. A used pontoon with a small 40, 50, or 60, and you're like, that's a great deal. And it's on a 25, a 30-foot boat. It's barely going to push that thing 12 miles an hour on such a big boat. Even on a 20-footer, it's barely going to get it to 18, maybe 20 miles an hour. And people buy it, run it for a year, are disappointed because it won't get to the speeds that they want. And now they've got a boat that they're disappointed in and they look to sell right away. For some people, a 40, 50, 60 is perfect. But for most people, if you're going to put six people on the boat or more, if you want to do some tubing with anything other than real little kids that are going to get bored at 12 miles an hour, the small horsepower is one of the biggest mistakes that you see in the pontoon market. The next is getting too small of a boat for the type of water that you want to boat on. There's 14, 16, 18, even 20 foot pontoon boats can be too small if you're running on a rough body of water. It's not long enough to get over the crests of the waves. You need to be able to hit three waves and make it over that third one. So then you've got to balance a level field. If you can only make it over two, you're going to nosedive if you can't make it to that third one. A 20-foot boat starts to get to that length on most bodies of water that you can make it over to that third crest and then continue scooting along the top. If it's a really rough lake, you may need to be at least a 22. But if you're on a small pond, if you're on a small lake, if you're going out on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, not a big deal. But if you want to be out in the mix on a little bit rougher lake on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a 16, even an 18 might be just a little bit too small. And again, the more weight you put on it, the more that becomes an issue because it sinks further down in the water, more likely to stuff the bow into a wave, damage your front end, and be disappointed with the comfort, with the handling. Next, we have those older pontoons with the teeny tiny 23-inch diameter tubes. Nowadays, the standard is 25. You're even starting to see some 27 and 29-inch center tubes but if you look at this pontoon it's got three people on it a couple of rafts and look at how low down in the water it's sitting if you see that you put another person on there another 200 pounds on there and that's going to go down even more you put a big heavy cooler on there a full tank of fuel and it goes down even more and again if you're operating on a small pond or a small lake that doesn't get rough you're fine but for most people these days, if you're out on a, a reasonably sized lake that has any traffic whatsoever on a Saturday or Sunday, and you're going to put five, six, seven people or more on it, those 23-inch tubes don't have the buoyancy to hold you up. You're going to sink down into the water. You're going to take water over the bow. You're going to stuff the bow. You're going to have an incredibly rough and slow ride. It's going to slow the pontoon down. So if you put a 50 horsepower on a short pontoon with those tiny tunes and put eight people on it, you're going to likely be very, 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 very disappointed. Next, we have a stern drive pontoon. A stern drive engine that's in this 10 engine compartment, difficult to work on. You can see on this is a 29-foot boat, and you can see how tight that engine compartment is. And it's, it's not like on a bow rider where you can take a seat out, you can move some things around and you got better access. Oh no, it's very, very difficult to work on most of these to do some of the, the maintenance, get into a bilge pump that's down there. I don't know how you would get to it. I would stay away from a stern drive. The only situation where I'd say, okay, if you're operating on a super rough body of water and you want that deeper down in the water drive to have a better grip and you want that extra weight because it's so rough and you're going to get a you know 25 27 30 foot pontoon it's about the only situation where i would say i can understand it i still think you'd be happier if you can find it a 300 horsepower or something like that Sometime we're starting to see some of the older pontoons people are refurbishing them and they're repowering them and they went from a two stroke and now they're putting a four stroke on and they're pushing the limits of the weight and the structural integrity of the boat. So if you look at this little 16 foot with a 300, that's a little Photoshop effort by my part there. But if you look on the placard, 
on every boat made. It's going to have some sort of placard that tells you the weight on it. It's a U.S. Coast Guard placard, and it's going to tell you the max horsepower that they're going to recommend. Now, keep in mind, the older two strokes were lighter than the current day four strokes. They're getting better. If it says 60 horsepower and you put a 90 horsepower four stroke on, you're likely well over the weight capacity for the structural integrity of that transom. If it says 140 horsepower and you're putting a 200 horsepower on it, you're going to likely have some major, major issues because it's heavier. It's putting more torque on the boat. So if you're buying a used boat, make sure you check that placard, see what the max horsepower, and then see what the actual horsepower is and make your choice there. Because there, I think what we're going to start seeing is we're going to start seeing transoms fail. Next, we have a pontoon with the rotted floor. Back in the day, you know, 20 years ago or so, they weren't using the marine grade plywood they are today. They were using treated plywood, which is they glue all the plywood together and then they treat it. Well, that caused problems because the inside of the wood wasn't, wasn't treated. Nowadays, they're treating the layers and then gluing them together. So each individual layer has been treated and is, is rock solid. But you'll find on some of the older boats, you'll find some rotted wood in the flooring and you may say oh that's easy i'll just replace the floor here's the thing with that to do that you have to remove everything the seats the fencing the cabling the steering the helm all of that needs to be removed including that outside rub rail the finishing piece all of that's got to come off it's a bigger project than most people realize and if you talk to somebody that redoes pontoons they They've got a huge shop because you've got to take everything off. You got a place to store it. You got to put it out of the way and you got to strip it down to the bare bones and build from the brackets up. It's a lot of work, a lot harder than some people realize. If you enjoy that kind of stuff, go after it, but just know what you're getting into. Watch some refurbishing videos that you can find on YouTube. Talk to somebody that's done it because there's a lot of little mistakes that you may make if you've never done it before. And I don't want you to get a situation where you, you dive into it, you spend the money, and now you're left with a, just a big pile of garbage that you're not willing, able, or have the time to fix. The cracked transoms. If they really just beat the snot out of the boat, they've got a, a too heavy a motor on it. I have a friend of mine that had this exact situation happen. They bought a used pontoon and their crack their transom actually broke off while they were on the water if you see wood in your transom hey make sure that wood is solid expect everything for cracks cracks in the welds cracks in the aluminum and if it's cracked i'm going to recommend that you really be cautious and unless you are a, a superb aluminum welder or you know somebody that is you probably want to walk away because it's only going to get worse next is a pontoon the pontoon's perfect but it's sitting on a scissor trailer. This is a scissor trailer right here. It slides down the middle of the tubes. If you're going to be trailering at any distance, more than maybe a mile or two on just slow neighborhood, country, low traffic roads, very flat, no curves, I'm going to say avoid the scissor trailer. If you think about it, the center of gravity is it's a very tippy trailer setup. If you're not very good at towing, if you don't know exactly how to tie this boat down and you've got to strap down all four corners of the boat to the center, every dealer that I know that uses a scissor trailer in the yard at one point or another, some a yard guy has dropped a boat, tilted the boat off the trailer, and now you got a disaster on your hands, probably ruining the tunes. Um, so if you're buying a used boat that has a scissor trailer on it, figure into the equation if you're going to be trailering at any distance, figure into the equation that you're going to have to buy a new trailer. You're not going to be happy. It's not going to be super safe uh, if you're traveling at any speeds, any curves, uh, any distance. Same thing with the pontoon trailers that have the teeny tiny wheels on it. It sits lower. It seems like it's a better situation. But if you're going any distance, those wheels are spinning at such high RPMs that the tires are going to get hot. The hubs are going to get hotter. And if you're going any distance, it's only going to cause problems and you're going to have a breakdown and you're going to be stranded on the side of the road. I would encourage you to step up to the larger diameter wheels. It's going to set everything up higher, but the wheels are going to turn at a slower speed. It's going to be safer. It's going to be more reliable and there's going to be less maintenance rental boats and boat club boats. Now, actually, 
contrary to what you may think, I'm going to say these boats are okay. Do your inspections. Make sure that they don't have a cracked transom. Make sure that everything else goes. If you haven't watched my how to buy a used pontoon video, check that out for sure. Get the Boat Buyer's Toolkit. But my parents bought a, a, a rental pontoon out of the Lake of the Ozarks, one of the roughest bodies of water that I've ever been on. Boat Club Boats. Here's the thing about them. Yes, the users don't know what they're doing. Yes, they may do some dumb things to them, but these boats are incredibly well serviced. They may get three, 400 hours on in a season, but they're going to turn them over every season or two. As long as there's not structural damage to the boat, that motor is probably better taken care of than many other boats out there that only have 50 hours on because every 50 hours or every 100 hours, there's a professional mechanic that's servicing them, inspecting them, and doing everything that you would want to do. That's a little, just a little curveball to throw you at the end here. Grab that toolkit, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and uh, remember, life truly is better on a boat.